about web uh, sites, web design, and a little bit of a rationale for why we have you covering it here uh, in CIS 102. Um, this is not an existential question the way that like what is the sound of one hand clapping or if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it does it make a sound this question has an actual answer uh, and that question is if you don't have a website do you really exist and more and more the answer to that now is absolutely not right so even here in Rockford when you made the decision to come to Rock Valley College, you probably had to come here to rockvalleycollege.edu, our wonderful, wonderful website, just in case they're listening. Um, you had to come here to rockvalleycollege.edu, you know, and you would have come through here uh, and, you know, found what it was in the way of information that you needed to get by, right? So my guess is, even today, now that you've been here for one or more semesters, whatever the case may be, right? Whenever you need to come in and check your email, you probably come in through rockvalleycollege.edu, come to my RVC, scroll down and get student email, right? Or if you've got to go to Eagle, you would come here and then, you know, come off of the jump of this page and go to Eagle, or when you have to look up courses instead of, oh, I don't know, looking up anywhere on campus and seeing all of the, you know, millions of pieces of paper we have all over the place telling you about courses, you probably come here to rockvalleycollege.edu uh, and, and you find what courses you need. You know, we use the web just to waste all of our time, right? Uh, so I have this tab open, uh, it's theverge.com, like all day, right? Uh, and I'll come through here, and in those few precious moments I actually get to myself, I'll come through here and read something over the course of a day. Um, here for SSNC-MILW.org, uh, this is Silver Spring. Um, this would have been my most immediately previous job to um, Rock Valley College would have been to help maintain you know, this for the organization. And one of the things I could tell you as, you know, an IT manager and somebody as uh, part of the management team there, um, we know that if we don't have a website where people can come and really quickly make a donation, we don't get those donations. So as, you know, a, a neighborhood center, as a nonprofit, as a school, if we do not have a website we do not exist, right? You would have picked a different school to go to if you couldn't come to our website and get the information you need. Um, you know, for Silver Spring, people would have donated their money elsewhere if they couldn't find a place to do this. Uh, if it's The Verge, these people wouldn't be making money if I wasn't coming through here and clicking on things, you know, that was enabling them to get ad revenue from us clicking on stuff. Uh, and those interactions are not getting smaller, right? We are not spending less time on the web. These interactions are getting more robust. They're getting more dense. We are coming back to them all the time. So the web is not going away. And what you do to sort out a space, you know, in your career, potentially, where you can come here and say, yeah, I can help you, whatever company you are, I can help you provide a better experience for your unknown potential future clients on the web. That is the kind of skill, that's the kind of attitude that's going to help get you paid. So we've already, you know, kind of set up the idea that the web really is important, right? And here this week, you're going to get an opportunity to use brackets, and that's right here, uh, to actually go through and create a website. So a website, again, really just is a collection of web pages. It's not any more complicated than that. Um, and what you'll do is you'll go through and you'll create a web site of, you know, several pages, four pages. You'll have images. You'll have, you know what we would consider to be kind of the bare minimum that you would require to have a web page, some sort of presence out there on the web. 
Um, what I would tell you is that is an excellent start to being able to understand just what it is that we do as web developers to help companies, you know, make an impact on customers by having a web site. Um, so what we see here in the kind of the right hand side of this window as we go through is HTML cope. Uh, it is simply, for the most part, text, right? So still some of the most important information we can give to our, you know, our clients, our customers is text based so that the customer can come through and read about what it is that your particular uh, business is going to be able to provide to them, right? So you'll see most of this in the HTML is just text. Um, and we have these here, which are called tags. Tags are part of the markup for a page. So essentially what we're saying here is, look, HTML um, is good enough to give you a little bit of color. Um, it's good enough to give you links to other pages. It's good enough to give you, you know, images and text. But we need a little bit more. It's like peanut butter. Peanut butter by itself is usable, it's okay, but it's supercharged when we have the jelly aspect, right? So CSS, that's here on the left-hand side, is the jelly. And again, jelly is only, frankly, it's kind of crap by itself, right? You'd never, like, I'm going to sit down and eat a jar of jelly. That's weird and you're not going to do it. Um, but when we put together the jelly and the peanut butter, now you've got sandwich fixings, right? So here in the CSS, this is where we tell a browser how it is that you should display the text that we have and the markup that we have over here in the HTML document. So we have tags like body. Uh, body is where we keep all of the stuff in a web page. And if I come over here onto our web page uh, and I look for a tag called body, that's where I'm going to find it. Um, and what we're doing over here in the CSS is we're telling the browser how to respond to everything we see over here in the HTML. So this is what you are going to spend your time doing with the HTML or the XHTML assignment here in Eagle. Um, just a couple of notes on the assignment and a couple of notes on how it is that the industry works. So just a quick note first, like I mentioned, on how it is that the assignment works. So I'm going to flip back over here um, to Eagle. No surprises here, right, guys? Um, over here in modules, and this is already in a message I sent to you guys, but I think it's probably worth mentioning one more time. Uh, if you scroll down just a little bit past the orientation, if you scroll down past the quizzes, um, you'll find essentially two modules, um, XHTML parts one and XHTML part two. Um, part one consists of units A and B, um, and two is C and D. Essentially, the way this works is you start your, um, you start the document uh, and you just keep working through it, right? And essentially what I'm doing is I'm evaluating the first half first and then the second half second. But you're not like shifting gears and creating new documents between uh, like part B over here and part C over here. You're just working all the way through. The reason we have it broken up into two pieces is so that in case something goes like tremendously wrong, with the way it is that you're coding stuff. Sometimes it happens. Um, it doesn't happen very often. Uh, but essentially what I did was put like an artificial breakpoint in there so that it it kind of forces you to do it in two halves so that I can say in case something has gone terribly wrong, the first half was good, now let's look at the second half or you know something to that effect. So I'm trying to break it up for you so that you are guaranteed a better score overall because you know uh, hopefully by making it smaller pieces we can ensure that for you uh, here in the HTML module materials this is where you're gonna find all of the good 
support stuff that you're going to need before you get started with the HTML stuff. Um, so this here is the tutorial. Uh, the tutorial has all of the instructions you're looking for. Here's the secret to the instruction set. There's actually there's three secrets to the instruction set. Number one, any place that says print, don't. We cut down enough trees as it is. We don't need to do more of that. Number two, any place where it says use notepad, do not use notepad. There are probably only a couple of professionals left in the entire planet who use notepad to do web development. Everybody else uses a developer's environment and that's what we've got for you if you scroll down here that's brackets.io. It's not the only developer's environment. We're going to come back and talk about this in just a minute. But it's free, it's fantastic, and it's on both platforms. So if you're running a PC or if you're running a Mac, they look, feel, and act exactly the same on both platforms. Um, and through these several podcasts I have for you here, we essentially walk you through creating um, a demo document. We walk you through talking about HTML a little bit more in depth. We walk you through essentially everything you're going to need to get started. So don't skip those because you're going to find that they're helpful. Um, the, the rest of everything in here is, um, essentially repeats of the same material. So the lecture part here is really most of what's happening here just in different formats, just in case you wanted them. Uh, so everything you need is going to be here. Um, Unit D has some images that you're going to need that you can find here in the uh, XHTML unit D.zip. And again, all of the instructions you're going to need are here in the tutorial. Um, that's where you're going to find the step-by-step -step thing. I mentioned there were three secrets to getting along with this document, the first of which is don't print, the second of which is don't use notepad, use brackets, the third of which is essentially you're doing everything you see in blue. You're typing along with the document just so that you can have the experience of actually creating a web page and actually creating a web site. So now that we've got that part out of the way, let's just take a look really quickly at what a developer's environment is. Now, what I'll tell you is both Windows and Mac, um, frankly, Linux and Chrome, and that's about it. Most of your tablet environments really don't provide you with any way to create a web page. So what we need is an environment that allows us to do that. Now, the, the training materials have you, um, which again, don't do this. I'm just telling you what the, uh, the hard way might be, is to use, and this is Notepad. On a Mac, if you have uh, a Mac, um, you would use text edit to do this. But what I'll tell you is this is horribly inefficient, this is tremendously ancient, and nobody on the planet does this to do a web page. So what we can do is we can come in here and uh, we can start to develop a web page. So um, like I mentioned in the podcast materials, um, you know, you can come through here uh, and using tags uh, and simple text, you can put together a web page. So here I have the tags for HTML, the opening tag here. I'll move this off of the side of the page maybe a little bit. Uh, here the closing tag for HTML that that lets the browser know, hey, everything inside of this is a web page. Here I have the opening and the closing tag for body. This lets the browser know, hey, this is where all the content that I'm going to show to the user is. This is horribly inefficient. It's very, very difficult for you uh, as a developer to be able to read this because it's just simply black and white. That's not the way our brains work. Um, it does not help you uh, locate and eliminate errors and issues. It's not good, frankly, for developing web pages. And no professional does this anymore because we don't have time to suffer. We use what's known as a developer's environment. So that's over here with brackets. Now, 
Rackets is one of a, a host of developers' environments. There's, there's dozens or hundreds of them. Um, but again, this one uh, is one, number one, that was made by Adobe, and Adobe knows what they're doing. Number two, it's free. And number three, it looks the same across every platform. So that makes this really highly usable for us for this class. Some things I just want to point out here that a, a, a developer's environment are going to give you. Um, number one is color coding. So you'll notice that uh, content out to your user is simply in white. Uh, you'll notice that tags, uh, like P for paragraph, are in blue. You'll notice when I highlight or put my cursor in and click um, an opening tag, right down here from line 20 down to line 24 that its closing tag is going to be highlighted this kind of stuff helps me as a developer figure out where my errors were over here in the CSS so remember these are like the peanut butter and the jelly pieces to uh, developing a web page uh, this also it's a different language CSS is a little different than HTML is I mean they always go together but they're a little bit different um, you'll notice the um, color coding happens here too. So when I have a property like margin uh, and I have values over here like zero and auto, they're color coded. So me as a developer, I can come through here and in really, really short order, I can look down through here and locate any of my you know, potential issues. That's something that Notepad cannot provide for me. Um, there's there are dozens of environments and many many of them are cheap uh, or free uh, another one um, I'll, I'll just show you here is called Atom A-T-O-M I know I pronounce it with a D maybe for some people um, this is the same gig right uh, so here we have CSS on the right hand side here we have HTML on the left hand side uh, you'll notice it is a different color coding set um, but it's doing exactly the same thing for me. When I highlight um, an opening tag here on line four, that's head, you'll notice it uh, gives to me via underline the corresponding closing tag. That kind of stuff helps. When I come through as a developer, it helps me locate where my issues are. Um, so what you'll be exposed to via this particular uh, assignment is HTML and CSS, which are universal. So HTML and CSS works on Macs, it works on PCs, it works on Linux, it works on um, everything. So like uh, probably the display in your car uses HTML to some point because it's so small and it never crashes, it's perfect for that. Probably the display you have on any of your smart devices somewhere in a home, like a Nest thermostat or a Google Home or any of those kinds of things are going to rely on HTML because it is ultra small, it is ultra fast, and it will not crash. So um, web design really is where we affix uh, how it is that we are going to give our content um, you know, to whomever our potential future customers are. Now, we actually have, in Word, uh, we have a really quick and dirty, I wouldn't use it very often, but in a pinch you can, uh, developer's environment. So all I've done here is I have dropped an image into the background. Um, and if we come to file and say export uh, and change file type, we can actually save the entire page as a single web page file. So this is something you could publish in a pinch and put out there on Facebook or on Twitter. If you have a um, like a flyer, right? A billboard, you have a poster and you want to get that out there on social media, you can actually use Word the way you've been using Word here for this class, which is to produce high quality multimedia. And you can actually have that saved as a web page so that you can use that in a you know, a Facebook post or a Twitter post or an Instagram post or whatever it is that you need so that you can get this out on your social media feed. Uh, and that works out to be pretty great. So is that really how we do development for the web? So is that really what happens when we come through here and we see, you know, theverge.com, which is going to slowly start to re- uh, paint here we go so what I'm telling you is or 
ask yourself this maybe. Uh, so you're telling me all this stuff we see here on the web, all of this stuff we see here with rockvalleycollege.edu and myrvc, right? Uh, so we have all these buttons, we have all of these social pieces, we have uh, these advertisements potentially that go through there. Um, we have all these pieces of high quality media we have. If you'll notice when I hover over um, these images, you'll see it uh, changes the colors there. So you're telling me that all of this is done in a developer's environment just like this. Well, yeah, actually, uh, we could do all of this from a developer's environment just like this, actually with only a little bit more exposure to HTML and CSS. Little things like this are baby playtime easy. That's what makes the web so fantastic. It's how quickly we can put things together. As you're putting together the uh, you know, the assignment, the HTML module for this particular week, um, you'll be, after a while, you'll be surprised at just how quick you make a change and there you can see the change. You make a change, you can see the change. It'll be, um, I think that's one of the really exciting pieces about web de uh, design and development is just how quickly it is you can put a product together. But am I telling you that every development comes through here, comes through an environment just like this one, where you're doing the lion's share of the typing, where over here uh, in the CSS, you are doing the lion's share of the, um, you know, the markup, how it is that you want that page to be displayed. And I'll tell you honestly, that is not the case. Um, we have what are known as platforms. Uh, a platform is an environment that is um, put together using highly, highly effective tools so that it takes the time out of your development. You can use a, uh, a template and get it done entirely more rapidly. And are fantastic web pages put together on WordPress? Yeah, absolutely. WordPress.com uh, and the WordPress platform manages a, a sizable percentage of all of the web pages you've ever been to. Uh, Joomla, they're another platform. It's called a content management platform. Uh, Joomla manages a ton of the, uh, the web pages that you have actually gone to. Uh, Drew Paul, they're another one. This is free. Actually, all three of these solutions, WordPress, Joomla, Drew Paul, are free. That's really what makes the web fantastic is, sure, if you needed to, you could pay somebody else to do this. And what I'm saying is, don't let somebody else be paid to put these products together. You be the one who can come to a company and say, yeah, but I can do this for you. Uh, and you sign here at the dotted line and let's get that paycheck sorted out, shall we? Um, so these platforms, uh, WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, there's a million of them, but these are the three really big ones. Um, these platforms enable you with just a little bit of HTML and CSS knowledge, go through and take a template, uh, rapidly develop the content you need on that template and then turn it really very very quickly into a product that you can deploy and deliver for a client so our, i think it's this rvccis.org um this is one of our pages for the the cis department here at Rock Valley College. So when I give a workshop, we can just add more workshops here to our, you know, uh, uh, Rock Valley College adjacent website. And what I'll tell you is these, I do not go through and, you know, develop these pages in brackets. Uh, I use brackets later on to make really small fine tuning pieces to this. But I use for this one, it was WordPress to go through and get, you know, the the page looking the way it was supposed to. Um, as a as a as a shameless, frankly, shameless self plug here. Um, we do here at Rock Valley, uh, we absolutely positively offer courses in 
web development. And it is my suggestion to anybody to take a course in web development. So it's, it's a shameless self plug. I will admit that that is true because I am the instructor for those courses by and large. But what I'll tell you is irrespective of the industry. So if you're in engineering, if you're in nursing, if you're in, um, you know, e-commerce, if you are in retail, if you are in government, if you are in education, it does not matter. One of the top five skills in every industry, it's usually between number three and number five, is web development skills because that means that you can take a product or a service. We can take an educational product here with Rock Valley College and we can expand that to a wider audience. We can take a tech product, right? So The Verge. And we can expand that out to a wider audience. We can take a neighborhood center, a cash-starved, education-focused, uh, uh, it's a nonprofit, it's a charity. And we can take this charity and in short order, we can extend the you know, the, the, the influence base of who has access, who has knowledge, who can uh, just learn about our products and services. And the only one way to do that is with the web. So we do that on content management platforms uh, like WordPress and Joomla and Drupal, or we can do that in developers environments like Atom or Brackets or in a pinch we can actually rely on things like Microsoft Word to go through and help us make single web pages that we can use to snap into things like our social media so that we can extend that net to the widest possible audience. The single best tool on the entire planet we have to do this is not radio, it is not television, it's the web because you would sooner leave your house without your skull than you would leave your house without your phone because you might need to get to the web at some point today. So do not minimize, do not marginalize or, you know, constrain the amount of influence it is that the web can have on your industry, on your organization, on your personal brand, whatever the case might be, the web is really how you are going to get that message out to uh, a, a huge audience. And honestly, you can do it for free. 